Good morning. It is a Wednesday. It's uh, oh, it's about 10 o'clock. It's kind of still morning. Uh, counting down to my last day at work, right? I'm retiring after a bunch of years at KTV Channel 2. I'm going to end up Thursday night. So I'm kind of excited about it. Am I sad? Yeah, yeah. Anytime you do something for a long time and then you stop doing doing it, it definitely, there's this component of sad, but I was, I was telling my wife, Pam, I go, I'm actually, like, I should be winding down, but I kind of feel like it's just the beginning. I know that sounds cliche, but I really, I'm so enjoying this, right? This opportunity and finding you guys and then just get to talk weather in the morning. I swear to God, this is what I do. So it's like, okay, this is organic as hell. Um, I want to show you this picture. Okay, first let's talk, start with the weather. So 70s today in the Bay Area. Up in Seattle, you're finally getting a break. Portland, you're getting a break after day after day of rain and flood, just a chance to drain out. Um, Southern California, you got fog along the coast, Laguna Beach and Oceanside and down to Malibu. That's gonna obviously clear off. There's a real shallow inversion. And I'm gonna talk inversion right now. So the next chance of rain for us, for us being um, Northern California, South to Southern California, kind of kicks into gear at the end of the weekend, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, when that whole March 4th that I kept pointing to looks pretty potentially good. And we'll see that potentially good for rainfall for us, which we need, right? We've been dry for a little while, snow in the mountains. We'll look at the long range model. Um, but I wanted to show you this. I was just looking around the state. You'll see a couple of things that indicate this, but this is the Mount Tam live camera. And the first thing I want to show you is, looks like I'm moving, I'm just toggling it. But see right here, that's Santa Clara Valley down there, down towards, you know, on the way to the Santa Cruz Mountains, Mount Amanam and, and what have you. But this valley, you can see the inversion. You can see how shallow it is. It's, it's not necessarily fog. It's sort of a haze kind of condensation fog. You can just barely see it. But the thing that I thought was most interesting was, so, so let's go back out to the beach. That's Ocean Beach, where I have spent many hours of my life, many thousands of hours. And what's interesting, you see that white water? So the swell is pretty good size, like we talked about. There's a high surf, um, not advisory for us, there's an alert, a surf alert, which is the next level down. But you see that white water. So watch the, I think you can see this, I hope you can. Watch right, can you see, see the, see the, see the haze that comes off like right here? That's salt haze. See that kind of little puffy, puffiness above the sea. When the waves break hard, the water hits and then it starts to evaporate into the air and then the salt uh, doesn't evaporate, the salt just hangs and you get kind of this salt haze, um, which is awesome because you can kind of see it here. I hope you can. Like if you look, keep looking, see that, and then see the salt haze go up into the, um, looks like it's going up towards, Nor up Noriega Avenue, right? It's, the winds are offshore right now, but there's a little bit of, must have been a little bit of a pulse there, but isn't that interesting? I hope you're looking at that, right? Now my buddy Jan Noll, if he was watching right now, he would tell me exactly what that is. But I think that salt is responding to the sunlight in the morning and per perhaps some sort of a um, thermal gradient that was created. But uh, the salt haze, right? Okay, just a little in of interest when you look at pictures. I think I talk about pictures all the time only because that's weather, right? If I'm showing you a map now, this is the forecast, but it's not weather, it's what might happen, or probably will happen, but when you're looking at a live picture, you're looking at, oh yeah, look, it's, there's a shallow inversion. Right away you go, no rain, or you try to go, no rain. This is uh, the national map watches and warnings and what have you. I like this map because if you're traveling, you're going, yeah, buddy, I got a good day, right? Look at Montana. There's a little bit, this is a leftover atmospheric river kind of pushing through. So those are flood watches and things of that nature. Yeah, but look at our friends up in Oregon and Seattle. You guys are getting a break. I mean, it was, it was hammering up there. You guys, it's funny because we were right in California, Crescent City got a bunch of rain, but everybody south was really just nothing, just warm, humid kind of a setup. Um, but that changes as we go into, well, as we get into Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Um, here are the watches and warnings. Uh, you've got a, you know, you've got a uh, surf advisory up here around Point Arena. You've got a small craft advisory in purple. That's for the California area or for Central California. Here's Southern California. Here's that dense fog advisory, right? You see it here down around Los Angeles and Anaheim. Malibu's got a surf advisory. They're stoked because it's hard to get swell. Okay. So that's Point Conception. There's Malibu. They do, LA's, even though they're known for their surfing, 
they, it's hard to get waves in here. It really is unless you have a south swell. So on a day like today when you're pulling a northwest swell, which is pretty big, it's clipping under the point and gets right in at Oxnard and Malibu, which is they're stoked because the rest of most of LA is pretty flat right now or small. Um, but none of it, none of this is high grade stuff. A little bit of a wind concern up and around Anaheim up in the hills. And then we go right to the beach. This is Ocean Beach in San Francisco. We've got pretty good sized surf, not as big as yesterday. It's nine feet, 13 seconds. We talked about this a little bit. See how close together the wave lines are? See how close they are? That's the 13 second interval. A, a good swell, a best, my favorite swells are like four feet high at like 20 seconds. It's perfect because the swells stretch out. You can get outside through the sandbar. When, it's, when the interval is close, peak crest to crest, like these are. You can see the white water to white water. That's the swell uh, distance or the swell set and dis difference in seconds. When it's close together, when you get down around 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, it's too close. Or, not too close, but it makes it hard to get out. This is um, Steamer's Lane, Steamer Lane. Um, nice day, good tides, nobody out. A uh, little bumpy right now, but uh, it'll, it's gonna, the swell's gonna kind of hover in this sort of, and right now I'd call this six to eight, probably Californian. And I would say the swell is going to kind of hover up and down the next few days. It's going to be not giant, but large enough. Um, Mavericks was breaking yesterday. I, I forgot to, I should have taken us over there. It was breaking yesterday and uh, a friend of mine, Sachi Cunningham, who I we actually had dinner with last night. She's a, a photojournalist. But she was out there on the water at like 6 a.m. and said it was pretty good. They were towing, but the winds were goofy. But it was big. She goes, it's it good size, um, but not so much big today. This is Middle Peak. See how it starts to show when the swell gets big. Middle Peak is still steamer lane. We went out to the point. This is by, I always talk about where the alphas sit. That's where the alphas sit right there. You could paddle out there, but you probably wouldn't get a wave. Um, I probably wouldn't get a wave. So I would sit a little further inside. That's that pecking order thing, right? And that's fine. This guy's, you know, kids probably grew up there. That's their town. Um, here is the model and this is what we're looking at for long range this is vorticity 500 millibar vorticity it shows where the potential disturbance energy is and so you can see right where are we here okay here's california right right there and then i'm going to push through you've looked at this enough so you kind of know so here comes see that undercuts that low see how it came see how it kind of got real deep it this trough got deep and then it amplified and when they amplify it gives the opportunity for this to undercut it's like a river if you've spent any time on rivers you, you, we used to call them oxbows when rivers meander they get such big curves in them they, the, the river just goes heck it's it's a fluid like the atmosphere and it cuts across and in this case this low right there's the river there's the big bend in the river but this low undercuts and comes in through here. Now it looks awesome, like something's gonna go down, but it really isn't um, anything that, you know, that, that's gonna bring much of rain. There could be a few scattered showers down in Southern California, but nothing really aggressive. So as we push through, you see it really just opens the door for what we're gonna see as we head into um, March 4th. Like right now, this is March 1st. And then here we go, boom, boom, boom. That's more from the north. And then you see this system here. This is March 3rd, door, storm doors open, man. Look at that, look at that. Oh man, and it goes. And then this next guy, oh, there's Franny. I knew that, that was bound to happen. She's, we got workmen around here. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna show you, I'll have a picture um, that I'll put in, probably right about here so you can see. I literally got like seven workmen around here. Great guys, but they're redoing the pool, redoing the concrete, painting the house. So, but I'm just doing it anyway. And they're awesome, quiet, nice, hardworking dudes. Okay, so where was I? Okay, so here is the storm door open. This is March 7th. This is through March 9th. Look at that. Now, right, you got something. I'm almost glad I'm not working that day because I'm gonna retire. So I'm like, <laughs> that day is gonna be a big news day for weather. That's, look at it, all the way into Southern California, that burn scars of Southern California. So we'll back it up again, and this time I, the dog won't bark. There's the undercut, that is Friday morning. This is Saturday into Sunday. It's, it's active, it's very active. And then you see it keep coming. This system looks uh, pretty aggressive, that's March 7th. And then this next one, really aggressive, that's March 9th. So if you buy it, we are gonna be pretty 
uh, wet starting on the fourth, fifth, and sixth. And it looks like it's, it, it'll, it, it'll be some iteration of that, right? So we'll see. Um, here's the accumulation. We've looked at this before. So we see, oh, here we are. It's Saturday afternoon or Saturday morning. See, LA is getting a little rain or it's up in the San Inez. You're getting some scattered showers. Uh, there's Saturday afternoon. Still dry, but a little, you see the spots, right? So these are areas, it's accumulation, but you can go, oh, that's, that's where the, the atmosphere has gotten moist enough to drop out some. But I still don't see dynamics, but here come the dynamics. And that is on Sunday afternoon. You can see where the rain is. LA's just kind of getting in on it. Bakersfield, you've got a little something going on by Monday morning. And then here we go. So this is the fourth, third, fourth, mostly the fourth, and then it loads up. Fourth, this is through the ninth. This is through the 11th. This is through the 14th, right? So that's aggressive. Now, this is accumulation. So in San Francisco's case, two inches of rain over the course of a bunch of days, whatever. It's a couple weeks, right? So that's not going to be a problem. And same with even Crescent City is up over a, almost a foot or a half foot of rain. So none of this is aggressive flooding stuff, but it's going to be a wet weather pattern from March 4th on. So we kind of count on that. Here's the uh, Mount Tamalpais. There's Ocean Beach out here. Here's Golden Gate Bridge. I, this shot tells us nothing today other than it's a beautiful day. Bay Area temperatures are going to be in the 70s. Up in the mountains, beautiful day. We'll go right to Palisades Tahoe. They're running the uh, Funa Tail today, and it's quiet. Again, ski week was last week, so things are mellowing out, but just beautiful weather up there. They are losing snow, but that March 4th, be through the you know through the next week of the first second week in March is going to be wet and it's going to be snowy it's going to be a, a, a full-on snow accumulation opportunity um, here is is it live yeah chairlift's going this is a sugar bowl it's a fun ski resort if you've never been there and then there's a terrain park and like I said if you're over you know if you're my age like if you're over my age you just stay to the side of the terrain park for sure um, and the kids are in school, good. So you don't see anybody there. This is Heavenly Valley. Good looking day, quiet, love the camera moving. You never know what you're gonna see. But again, yeah, yeah, a lot of people up there. So it's, what is it, Wednesday? Yeah. Okay, here's some Mount Shasta. Wow, right, live picture. Um, hands down the best, uh, the best live camera on the uh, San Diego State UC San Diego live camera alert system. This is stunning. You can see the snow, you can see the snow line, you can see how cold it's been. Black Butte's got a little bit of snow on it. It's gonna be a beautiful day. This is a camera I've never used. This is kind of Pasadena. Looking back out towards the west and you can see there's coastal fog in Southern California. And you can kind of see where they have their, like you can see the inversion here. It's, inversions are all the same. It's just a temperature difference, right? When the temperature starts, when it, when it starts to, when you get cold air, cooler air under warmer air, right? Or oh, I'm sorry, warmer air, no, cooler air under warmer air, right? It's stable because the cold air doesn't really want to rise. <clears throat> so there's, an, there's a, the warmer air is aloft, the cooler air is underneath. In this area represents the inversion. And you can see that's probably, that's not fog, that's probably morning commute, morning drive, getting caught. So LA, the basin has, you know, that's why they've known, for, they were, before unleaded gasoline, were known. If you ever look at pictures from the 60s, Southern California, this LA basin filled up with smog. I remember being down there in 1968, 69, 70, kind of right before unleaded gasoline came in and it was bad. Like it was like in the pictures, really bad in the summer months. But anyway, that's what an inversion looks like. That'll break pretty soon. And you also see what the inversion does. It allows the fog, there's fog along the coast to form. <clears throat> and we can see fog, right? So here is the inversion. Here you guys are in Southern California. Here's where we just were worried. We were kind of like just in here. And you can kind of see that's the basin. So what do we got? We got a beautiful day today. Friday looks good. Uh, Saturday, few clouds for everybody. Sunday, it starts to go a little. It's going to feel like, ooh, it's going to start raining. And then beyond that, that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, looks like it's going to be pretty wet. All right, a lot going on. I'll show you some pictures, swear to God. It's like, I'm, I'm just amazed I got through this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Appreciate, um, if you know what would help an awesome lot, you guys that watch till the end, love you guys. Um, if you tell a friend, just tell a friend, go, hey, this Bill guy's got a thing. We look at surf, we look at skiing, it'd be awesome. Just grow this bad boy. All right, thanks for watching.